The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can build a complete picture of your client's financial wealth. With NetWealth, you can track and monitor external bank accounts alongside residential and investment properties. Join the dots with Zeppo, a client data warehouse that connects your CRM and other tech systems with NetWealth. Discover a world of client data at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. By advisor request, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform in partnership with NetWealth. It's your go-to source for everything advice tech related, from research to demos, case studies and insights. To learn how your peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're putting the R back into your Client Relationship Manager or CRM with Ollie Bridge, Head of Marketing at Bonjoro. It could feel like a video tool is an optional part of the tech stack, but I believe embedding video into your workflow is essential. So far for our business, sending personalized videos without proposals has improved our win rate by about 11%, but we can do so much better. Ollie makes some great points about how AI is quickly taking away from the relationship or personal connection we have with our clients and gives some great tips on how to get started and structure videos to clients and prospective clients. I started by asking Ollie what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Yeah, um, I had a little walk around the house earlier trying to dig it, out, <laughs> dig it out earlier. I think most of my really old stuff's in the loft. It might be like uh, my wife's grandpa's like record player and stuff. But <laughs> okay. I think the one I could find was my old, I put it on camera, I know it's oh, not nice. on camera, but Game Boy Color with the original uh, Pokemon in oh, it. Oh, look out. So, um, it's not one I use. <laughs> it's not what I use every day. But um, I'm going to keep this and give it to my son or my daughter. I think when they're they're seven and four, so they'll probably at some point get into like retro gaming, and I'll be like, "That's really the cool. original." That's yeah. really great. And uh, yeah, obviously, audio only show, but that is quite a trendy, nice looking color there too. I think it's like an aqua, or yeah, it's like an aqua. Yeah, what's the uh, Trying to remember the specific, yeah, like an aqua blue. Yes. Um, that goes quite nicely against the red cartridge, oh, the original it. Pokemon Red. Yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting too because I I think like the is it emulators or something like that? Like there was something recently where you could just download this um, sort of Game Boy or that sort of style emulator on the app store and get all those sort of Game Boy games on your phone and everyone was having a great time. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a bit of kickback, wasn't it, from Nintendo there? Yeah. So we'll see whether this holds any value. I've got no idea right. in the next few years. Hopefully it does. You know, yeah. I still think this sort of human, touchable, you know, tangible stuff, yeah, I think it'll hold value. Yeah, no, I love it. No, that's great. And then, oh, I mean, moving away from the tangible side of things, in terms of AI, there may be one or two ways that you're using that either personally or in your work life. Yeah, I don't, I don't use it personally. You know, if I'm really honest, I'm not the most um, – I'm not great at logistics. So like personal life, I wouldn't be one of those people that uses AI to like sort out my diary and stuff and all this, you know. Um, but like in work life, yeah, I definitely use it. So the way I'm using it, obviously being the marketer here at Bonjoro, the way that I'm using it at the moment is to not necessarily to write new content because I just don't think it's very good at that. You know, I wouldn't really trust the quality level of that. Um, but what I do is get it to duplicate stuff that I've already written if I'm going to use it in a different format. So, for example, let's say bonjour. Well, let's say people are asking questions about video email on forums across Reddit or about how people use personalized video. What I'll do is I'll get one response, pop it into something like ChatGPT and say, hey, can you rewrite this in my style, you know, six or seven times? 
so I can post a response to those different questions with it being a little bit different with you know so it's not sort of simple copy and paste just those little like tweaks I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes do on short form content that's really cool that sounds like a really practical way I haven't heard of that example before that's really that's really awesome um, yeah I'm not much of a user of it myself in terms of the personal life but it definitely gets a run um, in the day job but I guess yeah moving to the day job and tools that we're using there Bonjoro could do you mind taking us through what it is and where it sort of sits in the tech stack? Yeah, so we are a, you know, at a simple level, Bonjour is a tool for sending videos via email. So you could say we're like a video email tool, um, but really we're a little bit more um, you know, advanced than that in the sense that we connect to your CRM or your email marketing tools to let you send those videos at the perfect moment. So give you an example, let's say you've got a website and you've got maybe an inquiry form on your website and you know when someone fills in that form, that comes into your CRM. Um, you can connect Bonjour to your CRM and say, okay, someone fills in that form, let's take all of that information and pull it into Bonjour, notify me so I can record that person a personal video. So what we're trying to do is a little bit different to other video tools is really about like timing and context. So you sort of set it up once, you set up what we call these workflows by connecting to your CRM, email marketing tool, whatever it might be. And once that workflow is set up, it's sort of set and forget, and it will just notify you, it will ping you and go, hey, you know, you need to send a quick video to make a connection with this new inquiry that's come in. Um, here's all the information that they've put down. Um, make sure you mention that, and you actually see that uh, next to your video recording pane when you're sending the video. So it's cool, so you can go sort of like hyper-personal like with your with your videos without having to like reference like a spreadsheet or like open up your CRM that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, really, it's that. And, and, and I guess like use case wise, we're really well suited then to either like inbound, so you know inbound leads and queries coming in, or like relationships driven stuff. So if someone hits a particular milestone, you could have workflows set up for that as well. That's really cool. I didn't think about it like that. So you're actually using workflows to actually embed uh, video in your process. So it's not just this optional thing that's on the side and I could send a video if I wanted to. You can actually really make it part of the, the process for any business. Yeah, so we, so we try and, like, when you come on board of Bonjour, what we do, we generally do, like, a one-to-one -one sort of setup and strategy call, we call it, with every client. Um, and it's less about, you know, there's lots of tools out there for, like, ad hoc videos now. You know, there's lots of screen recorders around. You can do ad hoc videos and they're great for that. What we're trying to do is say, okay, in your sort of client or customer funnel or relationships flow, like where are the moments where you want to make that connection with them and where they're going to count? Where's it going to add like value to your business, to your bottom line? Where's it going to help you retain more clients as well? Um, so we'll have a bit of a sort of like hash out, like what strategy works for you. And then we'll settle on, you know, okay, let's get these one, two or three workflows set up for you. Um, and then as I say, it's sort of set and forget. Just wait for it. We've got a mobile app, so you don't even have to be at your, you know, your desk. It'll be like, notify you, you've got a video to record, and then you just like grab your phone, record that video. So it's trying to like help it be part of, I guess, like your daily daily workflows. There's yeah. a bit of that upfront work, but once it's done, then it's, it's dead easy. That's really cool. So um, and I guess as well, like if you've got the mobile there and you're recording with your sort of front-facing camera, that can also come across as a lot more natural and sort of disarming than, than you know, team member at an office desk and they're in the corner and they've got a screen recording as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, it's funny, we first launched in, I said now, like 2017 when yeah. everyone still was in offices and one of the cool th things that people loved about Bonjour was the fact we did have an app. So, you know, they'd go on a lunchtime walk and do their videos rather than like, sitting there in an office being overheard doing their videos by everyone else um, i know a lot more people work from home now so um yeah that's sort of like a given nowadays um yeah. but yeah like the yeah you, you hit on a point there like the video what we're trying to do less is like the screen recording the content driven video it's the person the personality the relationship driven video so this is you on camera you know it's like webcam you talking to customer it's really about building that relationship we have a bit of a sort of catchphrase internally which is um putting the r back into your crm so by like plugging bonjour into your crm it helps you actually do the relationships thing 
because quite often relationship you know crms like the, the yeah. name's a little bit misleading yes, yes. they're not that great for relationships so we're trying to help solve for that a little bit yeah a lot of them are just sort of glorified excel spreadsheets that look a bit nicer yeah. but and that's about it but you can really forget like clients become lines and that you really forget that there's a person at the end of it and it's their data as well and just picking up on that on the sort of personal video side of it i noticed as well on your about us page like instead of having you know static photos with huge bios about what you like to do in your spare time you've actually got short um bonjour videos on there for everyone too that's really cool yeah yeah we had to do that uh, <laughs> you know i think we, we like to do the video thing yeah we've sent it's crazy but like since we launched in 2017 we've sent a personal video to welcome literally every single wow. sign up that's ever come into the business um you know sometimes at weekends we get a bit behind and we've got like a big monday but um yeah, we do that. So we like to do video, we like to sort of dog food our own thing as much as we can. So yeah, our about us page, if you check it out, bonjour.com forward stroke about, it's pretty fun. There's a yeah. picture of us all in, um, it was on a team trip actually, a re- retreat over in uh, Australia. I'm trying to remember where we went. I can't remember now. But we did this big pyramid all in our bear onesies. We've got this bear mascot, the cello. Yeah. Guys. So we've got that on there. Got all our little personal videos introducing us. So yeah, it's cool. And we get a lot of comments about that. Yeah, so I think it was. I think it's worth it. <laughs> no, I think that's brilliant, and it's yeah, it's really really cool. I guess just sort of on that, then we've sort of mentioned sort of briefly, you know, compared to other video providers, what they do, etc. But who do you who do you often get compared against? And I mean, we, we sort of talked about the relationship stuff that's making you stand out. But do you think there's there's other parts of the product that make you stand out from those other tools where you're just sort of hitting record on your screen? with your sort of mugshot in the corner? Yeah, so the big ones are Loom, obviously. Like yeah. Loom sort of swallowed swallowed up the world like 2019, 20. They did yeah. it really well. Um, uh, so they're one we're compared to a lot. And actually, we probably need to do a better job of like outlining how we're different to them. Because, okay. you know, not a lot of enough people know that. And also BombBomb Bomb, a little bit. So BombBomb's one out of the US that's um, it's sort of more focused on uh, real estate i think so they got quite big in the real estate space there um the big difference really like loom ultimately is a screen recording tool so you know we chatted off camera you know, it's, it's more about like recording content that you want to show to someone it's like if you've got something to show on your screen or you want to walk through something i think loom's really good for that uh, video editing we don't have video editing so we're not really for that use case bonjour versus loom we're more about timing you know, workflows, relationships, like trying to help you send those videos at those perfect moments to like keep those relationships flowing with your clients. Whereas Loom's that more ad hoc, you know, maybe someone's asked something, you want to show them how to do it, you can do that. Um, Bonbon, similar to us, but um, as I say, a bit more sort of real estate focused. So more of their functionalities like based around that. Um, I think they have like a Gmail plugin for like sending videos like via Gmail. Um, but again, they don't have that workflow focus. So we're like, we're much bigger on the integration side. We're also like quite, we don't talk about this enough, like the mobile app, Bonjour. We spent a heck of a lot of time building iOS and Android apps and upkeeping them. If any devs, you know, developers listening to this, trying to keep two apps up to date with, you know, the amount that they, you know, they change things on the, on the um, you know, provider side, Apple and uh, Android. Um, so they're amazing. So it's like, you know, you can do your videos dead easy, um, sort of fits with how you want to do things. So we're way ahead of the competition on that side. Something else we do, and we again, this one's like a little bit hidden away, but it's awesome, is a thing called roll-up videos. Okay. So what you can do, you can upload like a bulk list. Let's say you've got like a CSV file of 100 client contacts, and you want to send them all one video at the same time just to keep them updated, like check in with them basically, you know, let them know what's going on in your world. You can do that. You can upload that to Bonjour. Then you can select all those contacts and you click this little button in the platform. It's called Roll Up and it rolls them all up into one task. And you can basically send like a little broadcast video to them. Feels like they're just getting a video to them, to themselves. Um, but it's a really neat way of keeping connected at like key points, you know, in the journey for you, your business, keeping clients sort of up to date what's going on. That's one I think is is awesome on our side, and you know I don't see people use that enough. To okay. be honest, no, that's that's really interesting and really cool. And I think just on the, yeah, I think most um, listeners in Australia would be probably more familiar with Loom, and we actually use that in our business. 
Um, but it's sometimes, as you're sort of alluding to there, it does feel like a square peg round hole where, you know, we're using it for internal training videos and then it's like, oh, well, clients, you can have it too. And then it's just it's just the tool that's used for every single um, piece of sort of, you know, video interaction, whether that's internal or, ex- or external. And that roll-up um, functionality sounds really, really great too because it feels like Loom is probably meant to be, or at least originally was probably meant to be more sort of at scale, like one video and then send it out to, hey, this video yeah. might just be for you, but it's not personalized. It's not tailored like you're sort of mentioning there. Yeah, I think the Loom thing is meant to be like a really good solve for like asynchronous when yeah. you just wanted to put something out to someone to like say, hey, here's the content you needed, but there's almost like not enough the other way. Whereas yes. Bonjouro we have, so when you send a video to a client, they can reply to that. They can actually yeah. reply by video without installing anything. So they could send you a quick video back. They can type out a reply on their phone, on their desktop, um, and those replies come back into your, your account. You get notified, you've got a reply. So we're trying to keep that two-way piece going. So it's, it's like solving for asynchronous, but making sure that the client knows that they can actually engage back the other way um, which I think, yeah, you know, it's a good thing to point out. There's quite a oh, totally, yeah, yeah. I think that is such an incredible point. Like in terms of, you know, we send a, in our case, a Loom video, client watches it, and then you're straight back into text-based email comms. In terms of, okay, do I do another video now? Did they even watch it? Like it's just that is just so empowering for clients to respond how they want to respond. So they've got the option; they don't have to do a video back. They can acknowledge it in whatever way they they feel most comfortable and without installing anything too. Like that's that's yeah. unheard of. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's the key thing. We've always been pretty clear on that. We don't want the client customer to have to install anything. Yeah. It's like too much friction. We want you to just you know you do the thing. But on their side, yeah, yeah. it should be a minimal lift. And I assume as well because we sort of talked about the sort of CRM component of it with um, clients actually being in Bonjoro, that means you would get the analytics specifically for that client, right, in terms of yeah. when they viewed it. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So you get analytics. You can see exactly when they opened it. Is it like a timestamp, you know, when they watched your video, if they – um, reply to it, get notification timestamp on that as well. So everything's like fully tracked. Um, you can you can send this data back into your CRM as well. Um, so we can again, like when we do these setting strategy and setup calls, we work with you and say, hey, you know, what data do you want back in your CRM? Because it's important to you to know if things have been watched if they've replied. So we, yeah, we work on that side as well. Yeah. No, perfect. That's that's really cool. Would you say, or I just yeah, I wanted to ask like. Do you think the positioning or maybe the use cases for Bonjoro or video as a whole has probably changed since COVID, like since sort of 2020, like where it felt like it was let's get a video tool and stay connected? Obviously, we're now, was it four and a half years since since that sort of kicking off? Yeah. How do you think it's changed? Oh, it's a good one. It's a tough one as well because we've chatted about this a lot internally. I think there's been two major inflection points. Like coming out of COVID, the big one was people had done so much video. It's like how much more video do they want to yeah. do? So that relates a little bit back to what we were talking about. We want it to be a minimal lift on the customer's side. So like we don't really want them to have to hop on video if they don't want to, all of these sorts of So it's like it's got to be like frictionless for them. And then the, the the next one is is AI, and we're still like obviously heading into that, and that's really changing the dynamic with video now. And I actually think like anybody listening, this is like a bit of an opportunity. So I think there are tools coming out now where things like AI detectors, and I'll chat about those yeah. in a moment. Yeah. But I think anything you can do to make you your business feel more human, as obviously as this AI thing grows a little bit, is going to be great. We have a, made a decision here internally in terms of positioning. We're going to stick to your videos have to be recorded by you, basically. Like we're not going to give you AI tools to like fake someone's name, these sorts of things. And this is really different to where the market in general has been trying to go. So like there are other tools coming on the market and we know about them. And there's a huge temptation there. Like mm. the market pull for that is huge. But we're like, basically we think if we ride this out, we think the value now and on the other side of sticking to our guns and saying if anyone sends a video with bonjuro and like customer you know, you're going to send this yourself saying someone's name we want the market the person receiving that to know this has been made for them like someone has spent time to do this it's about relationships 
It's a human made thing. So we want to make sure that we're creating that perception that if you receive a Bonjour video or a video created with Bonjour, you know that's recorded for you versus something with another tool where it's like, you know, it's, it's still not perfect, right? When they do the sort of, um, I'm trying to remember what the word for it is, but the sort of AI driven um, sort of lip syncing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Still not great. And, and, and we get customers like ping us every few days, say, hey, I received this video. And they'll say, you know, I didn't like the vibe of it. So, yeah, that's we're sort of putting our stake in the ground saying we're going to go human side. So we think there's a big opportunity there if you like stick to that side and everyone else sort of goes down this automated oh, route, yeah. you'll stand out more. No, you're so, oh, you're so right. And I 100% agree. Like it's just a sort of AI mania and AI exhaustion. Like it's to the point now where like – You've got like we we actually don't I actually don't pay enough attention to like emails or messages that I get now or content because it's just you just yeah. has that it just feels a bit off and you just know that uh, it hasn't been written by someone like it just you can just tell and the other thing too is I was watching something the other day I'm pretty sure I mean that's code word for a TikTok where <laughs> someone was saying they reckon that. Um, face-to-face meetings are going to be back in vogue because people are going to eyeball someone and not have these, as you were sort of alluding to, these virtual meetings where you've got an avatar of someone or just all these emails where it's just this wall of text of AI-generated content. Like people yeah. will want to actually eyeball that person and get the information um, straight from the horse's mouth, not without assistance from AI. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm feeling the draw more. I work remote here, but more and more, I'm trying to get down to London to just like meet up with some people, you know, get that FaceTime. It's it's just like, you know, on the video side of things, again, something we do when we advise clients is a really simple thing. So when you send a video to someone and try and visualize this landing in their inbox, we're very specific with um, try and make sure that that subject line on your video email makes it very clear that you've actually made this thing for them yeah it's a super simple piece but it actually makes a huge difference to the engagement you'll get on those videos so like you know imagine a subject line like um you know i made you a quick video and then name of your client or i recorded a quick video about x for you tom yeah that type of thing um getting your clients used to the fact that they can expect that sort of personalized um you, know, you spent the time to do something for them, yep. I think is a really key thing now. Um, so we do do a lot of advice at the sort of front during that setup phase around subject lines, around messaging next to your videos as well. So when they land in the inbox, you can have a bit of message text that's next to them, basically like email body text. And we sort of advise people on, you know, what's the hook? What's the value? What are you going to be saying in your video? Why should someone watch this? Why should they engage? Um, and being really clear on that. Because if you want someone to engage with your content, you know, just having that that idea there. Just going back to that AI tool, I think it's really interesting. I don't know if you've heard of heard of it, but there's um, a tool called Cara Art, so C A R A Art, and it's absolutely exploded in the art scene. I know, yeah, we're not talking about sort of art yeah, world at yeah. the moment, but it's interesting what they've done, and I think it's really clever. And I think we'll see more of this. Is they've created this AI detector. So when you upload art, you, you basically have a portfolio, a bit like Instagram portfolio, but it's for your art, so for artists. They have an AI detector, so you cannot upload AI-generated imagery content into your portfolio. And the beauty of this is that it keeps it all clean and human. So from the artist's point of view, they know there's no threat there. So they've all absolutely, like, they love this idea. So they've all gone to this app. It's gone it's like absolutely exploded. And from a consumer's point of view, they know that anything they buy from there is artist made versus AI made. So I think it's it's really interesting dynamic. Yeah. I think we're going to see this more over the next two or three years. Platform holders or tech you know, uh, makers figuring out how to protect the the IP of the person or the humanness of the person against sort of AI. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's 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 really interesting. And I think you've also just sort of reminded me that we're probably going to see, like, we've already got sort of email spam filters and all that sort of stuff. There's probably like AI screening coming as well, yeah. right? Like, this has likely been written by AI. That's yes, yeah, such a great point. I hope so. Anyway, it helps. Yeah. On your <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone um, business idea there. So, I mean, just sort of unpacking a bit more 
of your functionality, we've, we've sort of touched on the, obviously the highly engaging and highly relationship based video messaging. So that's when you're just really just sending a, a video of, of you, the person, and obviously the screen recording is there, is there too, if we need it. Do you mind sort of talking a little, a little bit about the testimonials side of yeah. things? Because that's, that for us, at least we are sort of limited to, you know, the odd Google review, or sort of extracting that and putting that on the website in a, a carousel form. But this is, yeah, quite a compelling piece of the puzzle when it comes to clients actually doing videos for you as a business. Yeah, I should have said that on the positioning side. I think I went sort of too, too deep on the AI. But like, no, the, no. yeah, for like on the positioning side for us, last few years as well, we've gone a little bit more towards being like an all-in-one tool for, for video, but also a little bit for relationships. And what I mean by that is video messaging, so video email, was our way of helping you build relationships with your clients. And what a lot of our customers started asking for was, okay, I've built those relationships. Is there anything you guys can make, can do to actually help me use those relationships, like leverage them a little bit? So we went away uh, about 18 months ago and we built a new product into the platform um, for gathering customer testimonials. So these are text testimonials or video testimonials, and the video ones are great. And basically what you do and it's really simple for you and your client. You create like a sort of mini survey and it pumps out a link and you can share that link with your client via DM or email, you know, wherever SMS. They click on that link and it walks them through giving you a testimonial, whether it's video, written testimonials. Uh, you can ask up to six questions and you can also gather like if you need any assets like a profile pic of them or their job title like anything that's going to go with that testimonial you can ask them for as well um but again the whole point of that like super easy low bar frictionless for your your customer or your client um and that has been amazing so we've had like i think it's about 15 to 20 percent of our customer base using both oh, wow. of those products now so video messaging plus the testimonials um we use it ourselves and a really cool thing you can do as well like when you you know, download them, you can manage them all in one place. And I guess for you, your whole organization, your team, you then know if you're looking for a testimonial, client testimonial, you know where they are. They're in Bonjoro. You can go in there, grab them, download the MP4 file. If it's a video, share that on your social media, you know, wherever you might use it. But we also give you uh, publishing tools. So you can basically say, I want to create a wall of love of all of these videos and text testimonials from my website. You can select which ones you want to embed on your website, and then you just put a script on your site so your web developer can do that once. Once they've done it once, you have full control. So you've got all these testimonials, and whenever you get a new one in, you can say, oh, that's awesome. You, know, you watch the video back. If it's good, you can just tag it and go add it to my the homepage of my site or add it to our About Us page or you know, whatever, wherever you might use your testimonials. So really, yeah, really cool. So trying to go that like all in one yeah. relationships driven video tool. And you know, we're gonna develop more. We're here for a long time for the long yeah. run. So yeah, we'll do more and more of it. No, that's so cool. That is like a full testimonial workflow. Like you've made it so easy for people to um, just to do that. Like the so as you mentioned, there's that sort of guided process. So you've got the questions and I assume that helps with like if they want to write like a script or something to talk to. Um, and as you said, uploading the assets or like their mugshot or uh, details as well. That's really cool in the text aspect of it too. And that wall of love, that's awesome. And I believe that's – is that what you're using on your website for your, your About Us section? That's what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to our homepage, go to yeah. bonjour.com. We use it in a bunch of places. Go to our homepage. If you scroll down, yeah, halfway down, you'll see them, see them load up. Yeah, cool. There's text, video testimonials. Yeah. Um, and you've got little design tools. So when you use okay. our publishing tools, you can put your own font. You can put your own colors. You can – change the roundedness of the corner all these little details yeah. that people want to be right because it's on their website so yeah it can all fit your branding and stuff nice and that's that's also really really handy for maybe you know your leads or your prospective clients where they've got a a video from the who might be their advisor in a financial planning context or who's going to be the advisor but they could send a relevant testimonial or two for clients that are in a similar position to them um, I think that's yeah using the same platform like that's really consistent and sort of yeah creates a consistent experience for clients too or prospective clients. Yeah, and I think as I said, like the team thing, yeah, depending on your team size, you know, if you're more of a sort of you know solo sort of organization, then you know, not as relevant. But, you know, let's say you've got a team of you know hundred 
financial advisors and you want them all to know where they can go for particular testimonials about specific things, yeah. um, you could have them all in there sort of tagged up in the right way and it's dead easy then to use them. Yeah, like you say, at the perfect moment, like during that, whether it's like during the sales flow or whether it's, you know, whatever, wherever it might be. Yeah, no, I love it. That's it's really cool and really compelling. Um, and that on its own, I think is incredible functionality. Like forget forgetting everything else. I think that's that's brilliant. Um, yeah. yeah, we ended up having to support sort of two full-on products. So it's right. Like, you know, we thought, oh, we'll create this testimonial still. It'll be easy. And it's like yeah, it's you know, 18 months later, okay, now we've got sort of two pretty meaty products here. Yeah. Let's, uh, but let's keep going. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess now that we've got a, a lot of videos um, hosted and they're on through the Bonjoro site, there you know, may be sort of personal information or sensitive information discussed in those videos if they're sent to individual clients. Like, what's been the approach to cybersecurity and and making sure people feel comfortable sort of interacting with the platform? Yeah, so we we're obviously serious about it, like being a video platform and and with sensitive information, personally identifiable information as well. Like, we work a lot in the EU, so we work with a lot of big institutions. Yeah, uh, UK, like we work with a lot of universities over here actually. So one of our use cases is um, universities sending videos to prospective uh, students. Okay. It's really interesting helping, you know, encourage them to like turn up at that university and roll that university. So with that means we've been really serious on like GDPR. So like we've had to, yeah, be pretty rigorous with our like cybersecurity standards, plus making sure that we're fully across like GDPR and, you know, any other um, yep. sort of privacy standards, standards around the world. So yeah, yeah, we're good on that. We, we make sure, you know, with any client that needs us to, we've got DPA, you know, data processing addendums, we can sign those, countersign. Um, so, yeah, it's not my realm, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I speak to the team that handle that. And, um, you know, I do a bit of the selling on, on the UK yes. side to so some of these institutions like the universities as well. So I, kn- I know and I need to know that we've you know, of got, course. Things, got things safe there. No, awesome. No, it's very comforting. And, yeah, once we've sort of got past that hurdle and – um, you know, comfortable to, to sign on. You mentioned before the the sort of heavy integration piece with making it into your workflow and integrating with your CRMs. Like, is that happening through particular sort of retail connectors or how does that sort of look in terms of setting that up and, and getting that up and running? So, yeah, the integrations where it's, it's, it's one point where we're probably not as um, – we have a bunch of direct integrations but quite often we need to lean on like something like Zapier yeah. to connect up with with other tools. But again, that's something we look at like during the sort of setup flow. Um, you know, we we try where possible to integrate and make sure that you can trigger things and get yeah. these workflows going automatically. Usually we can, and usually we can use a service like Zapier to help us yeah. like, set that up. We integrate directly with like HubSpot. You know, if people use HubSpot or you know services like PipeDrive as well. Um, yeah, you know, where we don't integrate directly, as I say, we'll use that third party and help you get that set up. Um, but also there's the CRM, yeah, sorry, the CSV upload as well. Yep. So you can do things a little bit more manually if you're stuck there. If you just need to you know, quickly get a, you know, a bunch yep. of clients in and ping out a video, you can do that. And you can add individual contacts as well. So, yeah. Yeah, no, awesome. I think, honestly, once, once that Zapier, um, you know, once the Chevron of Bonjoro is showing in that Zapier library, like anything's possible, and yeah. I would encourage listeners to at least check it out. And I believe they've gone through a pricing change recently where it's come down a lot and it's yeah. incredibly affordable. Plus, that's not a, that's that's forgetting all the efficiencies you're going to realize too. So, yeah, if you're on um, – if that tool's on Zapier, then odds are that you can do a lot of things and, and yeah. just make life a lot easier. Yeah, and you're right. Yeah, good to mention the price. I know they had a bit of a – Bit of a hiccup, bit of a like shakedown. Eighteen yeah. months ago, two years ago, where yeah, they sort of bumped. Like a lot of people, I guess it was difficult, wasn't it? The environment, inflation, you know, tried to bump prices a little bit, but actually recently they've come back down. And I think yeah, some pretty good plans on the Zapier side there. Yeah, nice. No, that's really cool. And yeah, anything that can make life easier when it comes to, um, especially CRM integrations, as we're talking about. Like you know, obviously we've got the CSV upload, but we don't want to be rekeying data. Um, you know, mistyping names or emails or variables yeah. and that sort of thing. So I think that's really valuable. Um, and also that's so critical from like, you know, a business-specific workflow. Like they might want to send out a video, 
on you know this time might be three days after this happens or something like this happens so yeah being able to control that i think is really valuable for advice businesses to to sort of curate that i guess just on yeah. that do you have any do you have any tips ollie for maybe advisors or advice professionals to maybe feel more comfortable about sending out video messages like we're talking about um you know improving relationships and, and doing that but what about those that are sort of feeling a bit uh, sort of stuck or on where to begin or, or where to start yeah I, I think the first thing is always it's not actually about the recording of the video so much when I when I dive into this with clients it's often comes down to more like the strategy okay. and the structure of the video versus like actually being on video itself because so let's say um you know, you're going to send a video to like a new inquiry coming in. As long as you know that's your thing. So you're going to send a video to every new inquiry that you know, leaves an inquiry on your form, on your website, for example. Just having a, a solid structure that you know you're going to follow in that video. So, you know, it might start with quick intro. You know, hey, you know, you know then their name, you know, bit of intro about you. And then a bit of context, you know, why you're sending that video. You know, orientate them a little bit, you know, why they're getting this video. And then there's the value. You know, there's going to be some value in there. So in your subject line or the message text that sits around your video thumbnail in their inbox, you're going to be hinting at, you know, why should they watch this video? What are you going to tell them? Like what, what value are you going to give to them? So then settle on the value. And then it's really call to action. So how are you going to close that out? What's the next step they should take? So just to repeat that, so like intro, context, to give them a bit of orientation, yeah. give them that value add, and then call to action. And really, like realistically, when you're doing that, it generally only takes 45 seconds yep. to two minutes to work through those. So you're not trying to sort of like move mountains. You're not trying, you don't need to impress them. As long as you've got that valuable bit in there and you get to it at some point, that's the bit they're waiting for and that they want. And then you've sort of hooked them in, you've got them there. And the last bit is the call to action. So I think it's more about, yeah, like, and, and the video timing thing mm. is is interesting. We actually did um, we did a study on this. We looked at I think we looked at was it one two million one or two million data points in terms of video lengths and the watch rates of those yeah. videos, and actually very little difference whether it was under a minute, minutes two minutes, uh, two to three, ten minutes. It's really about like the the content. If you've got your client to a point of watching your video and the value is there for them, and they're like, I need to be here to learn that thing or to get that advice, right? They're, they're going to stick with it. It's not like you're trying to do some sort of marketing piece. You're not doing a TikTok video. You're not trying to, like, hook people with some, like, great marketing, like, one-liner at the start or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, don't don't worry too much about it. Have that structure. So know your strategy. Know when you're sending them, and we can help you with that. Yeah. Know the structure of the video. You don't need a script. Just work with that structure. And and once you've done five, it's just it's it's like second nature. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. No, that's great. Like I think as you're sort of alluding to there, they just need to you need to get the client yeah. or the prospective client to click on the link and then odds are if you're sending it, you're sending it for a good reason, there'll be value in there and they'll watch it, or at least the the part that matters. Yeah. And there's all that's where we spend a lot of our time, that that value, that hook, what we've find when we sometimes do account reviews with clients and they're like oh my watch rates aren't as good as i hope they'd be we will look at their messaging and what okay. we'll realize is that they don't have that hook in the message text that's in in the email right so the email's sitting there with a video thumbnail of the sender and the client's looking at that thinking you know why should i watch it you just need to get that hook right and it can be very simple like for an example you know, on the Bonjour side, let's say someone's just joined up Bonjour and they want to use our testimonials product. I would have just a little, you know, hi, I wanted to send, uh, send a quick personal welcome um, and explain or like show you the, explain the three ways you can get the best testimonials using Bonjour. So that's my hook, the three ways you can get the best testimonials using Bonjour, the three ways you can easily get testimonials from your clients. Yeah. So they're going to watch the video because they want to find out that piece. So as long as you've got that piece in there, someone will watch your video. I love it. No, context is key. And I think just on that, I, I tried to do like a little bit of um, prep on our own business and using video. And I worked out because we're um, I've built in like essentially a, 
a way to include a video when we're sending out proposals to clients. So we it's a fully online process. There's two or three screens. They view the you know the line items of the proposal with the content, the billing schedule, and then they put their payment information and sign. But what I was able to find is if we include a video, obviously alternative provider, which may change shortly, um, if we include that video in there, it actually has increased our win rate by 11%. I actually don't know if that's significant or not, but at least it's positive. So it's obviously it's having a benefit. Okay. But I think the key point is that because the video is associated, the clients know that it's going to be about that proposal. So of course they're going to watch it because it's actually turning something that's not tailored in terms of obviously the proposal has been priced up for them. The wording's probably not so much customized, but it's the video that has that customization and the personalization. Yeah, that's interesting. Are you, are you sort of showing them through something there? What's the... Yeah, I think yeah. the majority of the time, it's actually one of our advisors who works remote full-time and they are literally just giving context to why we've arrived at this price and why we need to do this, why we need to have this service included this financial year, for example, and what's going to happen, what's the time frame going to look like, all that sort of yeah. thing. So giving a lot of context in probably, yeah, less than two minutes. That's interesting. Yeah, that context is almost like that hand holding, right? Yeah. That you sort of can't do. You might be able to do it over the phone, but you can't do as much on um, email because it's a little bit more disconnected. Yeah. They want to feel like you're sort of guiding them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can do that with your videos. So I assume with Bonjour, I forgot to mention, you can embed other videos below your personal video as well. Okay. And that's something we see a lot. So you can upload any video you already have on file. So let's say it's walking through something that's a little bit more complex for your client maybe, making it easy to understand in simple terms, you could have that embedded underneath your personal video. So your personal video could just be a little connection, like a little icebreaker, get the relationship, and then you say, hey, and what's that, but what's that little, what's that two minute walk through below? That'll explain how the process works. And that's a really nice way of making it a bit more scalable. Yeah, so cool. you're not having to do that two minute walkthrough, five minute walkthrough, whatever it is for every single customer or every single client, you can have that pre-recorded, but you've got your relationship based video, your icebreaker up above. Yeah. No, I didn't think of that as a, an example. I think that's really great. Like, as you said, personalized 30 second, two minute video to then roll into the, the scaled content of onboarding yeah. or, or whatever it is. That's great. Um, Ollie, is there anything we've missed? Is there anything else you want to add before I sort of let you go? No, I don't think so. I was, I was thinking a little bit on, you know, just the human piece. I do think there's an opportunity here. Anyway, I'm hoping it pans out like uh, this. 100% you know, agree. Like doing more yeah. of the human stuff, I think, would just be really great for every business, basically, yeah. is what I wanted to say. I hope it works out like that, because <laughs> if it's yeah. the opposite, then that's, that's rubbish, right? But, um, you know, I think you will stand out more the more you do this sort of stuff. So whether it's Bonjoro or whether it's anything else yeah. you do that's got that sort of human touch, a human element. Like that. No, I think, you're, right. I think you're so right, especially in businesses where – it is based on relationship and that that is the only differentiating factor like if you're competing on price then um well maybe actually maybe that is where you actually reach out and turn that into a relationship game as well and something like bonjour can really enhance that so that's yeah great um what's the best way to progress the conversation ollie and sort of get started uh easiest way head to bonjour.com yeah. um if you if you sign up we will so we do a free 14 day trial yep. we set and like i said at, earlier in the conversation we send a video to everyone that signs up so we'll make sure you get a personal video from one of us one of the team you know our two co-founders based in australia so if you're out there you'll get one uh, from one of those guys um just make you feel at home we'll invite you on a one-to-one setup strategy call we love having those calls just wicked hearing about people's businesses and what they want to you know, where they want to get those relationships flowing um, so we'd like to do that and then personally if you're on LinkedIn um, just type in Ollie Bridge so O-L-I Bridge and um, love to connect with you on there Let's do spend a bit of time on there <laughs> perfect Ollie I've really enjoyed the discussion today thank you so much for your time cheers Pat enjoyed it thanks everyone